Hello, I'm Craig Constantine. And I'm Vivi Carrasco. Hey, Vivi, it's a pleasure to get a chance to sit down and talk with you again. Uh, we've done a couple things together that are recorded, and I was excited when you responded and said, yes, please, <laughs> and hopped yes, into the please, schedule. And thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Um, we do, as I've mentioned a million times in the show now, we do a little pre-call to this, and you and I were talking about, well, as we do, as I do with every guest, there's like a bunch of talking that happens, and then you pointed out that the startup or the conversation that happens before you actually hit record with the guest about maybe how how precious that is or how much of a gift that is. And um, we started talking about that, and I think that's where we want to go today. So um, maybe do you want to tell me why, because I, I basically say podcasting, and then I ask, what do you think of? And what made you point to that startup or that pre-call? Well, the, the pre-call really brought to mind this shift in uh, perspective, this, this, um, this change that's happened in me from the beginning of podcast to where I am now. And I, I just thought it would be nice to reflect back to the podcast community what that is and how I experienced it and um, how wonderful how it is to have a community and just being grateful for that. When we initiated our call, I was like, so what kind of mixer do you got there? <laughs> it was like straight to the geek toys. <laughs> and it was in a very sort of curious what you got now. Cause we, I, one of the things that I've accepted about myself is that my toolkits are going to continuously evolve. I, right. you know, whether it's mobile podcasting or if I'm in a stationary position, but in the beginning of my podcasting journey, um, I used the equipment as an excuse to prevent me from actually having a cool conversation right. and, and pushing record. And now I've found that it's just this playful curiosity. And, and when I had that exchange with you, I'm like, wow, what a difference. It is. Yeah. And we did, I'm like, I know that we did that like when you and I talked before, because um, one of the things we're doing like, you know, meta is we have the video turned off for this particular recording. And you, um, you're the first person that I was on a show where the host said, Hey, let's turn the video off. And I had heard about that, but I had never experienced it. And we talked about that in the pre-call. Why? And, and I'm like, when you said the pre-conversation, I was like, yeah, I remember the one where we were talking about turning video off. So mm -hmm. it, I totally agree with you that there's, I was going to say there's a there's a magical space. <laughs> if anybody is a Marvel a Marvel mm -hmm. fan, there's a magical space where two people get together and have this, no matter how brief it is, conversation before they start. And I, so I'm thinking a lot of people. So of all the podcasters that I've talked to, and it, it's a huge number, right? not all of them have an opinion about what to do in the early conversation before the real podcast part. But the ones that do have an opinion, many of them say, press record as soon as possible. And I, I'm of the other camp where I don't want to press record until we've had a chance to do the little curtsy and bow before the dance, you know, like to make sure that we're on the same page. And ha have you put any thought into like, well, first of all, how, how early, you know, how, how much of a hurry are you in to press record? And what are your thoughts on like when we actually and start? Like, how does that change what's happening? Well, I'll be I'll be very practical in how it changed what's happening in, in this recording. Uh, when we were having our pre-call, I was, you know, sitting up straight, uh, <laughs> making sure my mic was, you know, about <laughs> six inches from my face, you know, camera is squared. And there was a lot of attention on what I was conveying to you. And when I said, let's turn the cameras off, I took the mic off the stand. Mm -hmm. I'm leaning back, my legs are up and I'm just sort of sitting here imagining that you're in that couch you're sitting on the couch and we're just talking. Um, so for me, not having the, the mental drain of how do I look, which you can't get over. And just right. being able to sort of imagine you there and us having a conversation with each other and the podcast community as the listener on the other side of the couch, like we're all here together. That's how it shifts for me. And I'm really grateful that I was comfortable enough to even ask you for that because early in my podcast journey, I wouldn't have done that. I would have. Mm. And I would have put on makeup and I would have done my hair and the whole bit, but you know, pandemic, I'm a new, I'm a whole new person now. Hmm. 
So do you, when you say, uh, well, first of all, thanks for feeling comfortable enough to turn, it's kind of like, <laughs> sounds backwards, comfortable <laughs> enough to turn video off and not give a crap. Way to go. <laughs> However, <laughs> but, but I, I know exactly what you mean. And I think <laughs> people in podcast would agree. Um, and I, I'm wondering um, when you said that, I, I just want to like ask a, a, like a deeper question. Do you mean you earlier in your journey, you wouldn't have felt comfortable enough when you're a guest to ask the host to ax the video or do you just Absolutely. mean in general? Yeah. See, Absolutely. I, I wanted to make sure cause like that's, so I'm thinking like, that's a good, um, that's a bad choice of words. That's an, a really interesting development to get to a point of comfort where you can say to the host, yeah, I know you have your whole, you know, the way you want to run the race here, but uh, I'm turning the video off. <laughs> <laughs> But but I agree. I have my video not just um, my video is muted so that I can't even. I mean, I I can't even see myself. I'm just staring. I keep thinking there's something wrong. Like I'm like ah, we're all right. No, we're only recording audio. <laughs> um. So yeah, I totally agree with you that there's definitely a level of comfort or a level of self uh, confidence that one needs to be comfortable to say to the person on the other end, we're only recording audio, right? Let's kill the video. Uh, well, and and it's not just. I think one of the things that that led to this, because it's not just that I'm a confident person, because I don't know that I am, but but you because are. I've been <laughs> because I've been on the podcast journey for six years, I have both experienced the distinct difference between uh, recorded uh, video and audio call, and sitting mm -hmm. back, relaxing, my posture changing, and just focusing on what I hear from you and what comes out of my, my, my voice and gotten feedback from listeners to say, it sounds like I'm right there with you. Yeah. There's, there's more uh, intimacy or it's closer, whatever mm -hmm. adjective calls to you. I think when we are vulnerable, when we let our guard down and that's what happens for me when I turn off the video, I let my guard down and I'm just immersed in the experience. Yeah, that's a good, a good point part of tell tell me ahead. sorry to interrupt you because no, no. i'm curious tell me more about this magic space for marvel haven't seen the movie don't oh. know the reference <laughs> uh it's from um oh i don't want to get it wrong because all the marvel people will kill me it's it's um <laughs> okay so in one of the movies that involved the marvel avengers you meet uh, sorry brain not working and i'm resisting searching agent colson uh -huh. is kind of a throwaway character and he winds up getting killed by Loki. And it's, it's a really interesting po point because he's a minor character in the movie. And when he dies, Samuel Jackson's character uses him as the catalyst to get the Avenger team to all get on the same page and come together. So there's a whole nother series that follows um, Coulson and his team and what my brain, I, it's not defenders, it's agents. Um, uh, my, um, hopefully I'll think of it later. I'll put it in the episode notes. Maybe anyway, there's a whole like seven, eight season long show about these first it's regular plain humans. And then they start trying to enlist some of the people who have special powers and Coulson actually dies in the movie where you meet his character, like dies for real, completely dead. And the running gag through the whole thing is he has this implanted memory about being in Tahiti. And that was what they implanted in his head so that he could completely ignore what they actually did to him to bring him back. So every time something happens that refers to his mysterious past, like, yeah, how aren't you actually dead? He would just say, yeah, I was on vacation in Tahiti and it was a magical place. Mm. And, and, but in reality, it was not Tahiti and it was not magical. It was alien <laughs> science and bad stuff. But that's the memory that covers it up. So anytime I want to just like, overplay something as being awesome. I'll just be like, it's a magical place. Oh, <laughs> no, it's interesting. A, it's a dumb, long story, but there it, it is. It is so not dumb and long. Yeah. No, um, my, when you said magical space, is it magical space or magical place? He says magical place. Tahiti is a magical place. Um, but uh, this is, I think that podcasting is a magical space. I agree with you. And that's what my mind interpreted, like this magical space and the magic, I love the word magic, the magic that happens on our journey, right? Like the mm -hmm. even if we had a map to where we started, to where we are, to where we're going to be, 
the the map doesn't define the territory, you know, like the elevation right. and the right. and I I just thought I inserted space, but I'm gonna have no, to that, watch that movie now. Uh, no, okay, I it's, I forget which one it is it's one of the th- might be like the second one that has Thor in it and Loki and yeah I don't know if you need to invest that much time and effort. <laughs> I invested way <laughs> Okay, so maybe I'll YouTube search or it and find it. Wikipedia, <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's called, the show is called, I remembered all the people out there laughing at me. It's called Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, like, okay. Yes. And S.H.I.E.L.D. is an acronym for this human uh, organization that tries to protect the planet. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It winds up with Agent Coulson being in charge. It's a great one. I got to watch all the way to the end. It's got a real tearjerker ending Aww. on the softy. <laughs> Anywho, um, yeah. yeah. So I, I'm like, my list of possible words is getting really long here because um, now I got magic space. And I'm also thinking maybe I should just call the show Tahiti at the end. <laughs> 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 and I throw people off. Mm-hmm. What the heck is this about? Yeah. Um, so did you finish your train of thought about this magical space, like the magical space of podcasting or the magical space of audio only? Because I have more I could say about that, but I don't want to steamroll. Well, there's magical space and audio only, but I, I also wanted to just loop back and, and close the loop on the magical space between the shifts that happen. I still love technology. I still love new tools, new toys, and I'm super curious about you know, different setups, but it doesn't weigh me down anymore. It's a Mm. much more playful approach. And I thought that was interesting for me to sort of realize I have the same characters, but they're not jagged anymore. They're more of a soft sort of slide into and out of. And, and that's, that's neat to sort of just become aware of that thing. Yes, I'll still buy more things, but it won't be, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, like books, right? Yes, I'm still going to buy more books, even though I haven't read the ones I've already bought. The, the stack I'm just staring at right now. So yes, I might buy the H6 Zoom, even though my four is fine, yeah. but I, I'm not going to ha- carry any weight around it. Yeah, that's a, that's a great observation. Yeah, sometimes I find myself like, oh, do I really need this other twelve dollar thing? And I'm like, yeah, but I would actually use that twelve dollar thing. So it's like, okay, I can I can have nice things. Like I'm allowed to have things. It's not that I have way too much. I had someone walk into our house one time and go, whoa, does anybody live here? Which I thought was a really <gasps> really rude thing to say. However, I think but we have that them- in common. I, would, I think what they meant was, wow, your house is really nice. I've also had other people. I've had one other person go. When I said, you can't come over, we have to clean first. They went, your house is like a museum. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I my um one of my sons is like, when are you going to decorate? Like, when is it going to look like you live here? And I'm like, this is what it looks like. Yes. We've lived here 10 years. Like, don't expect anything yes. else. So, yes. um, I, I and that would also imply it. My husband and I are fairly minimalist, so there's not a whole lot that we like spend money on. But the stuff that we do spend money on, we really go way over the top. Yeah, I, I don't know that I go way over the top, but like there's two pictures hanging over my over the desk that I'm sitting at now, <clears throat> and they're um, I don't know if you call them lithographs or whatever you call a reproduction of somebody did a sketch, um, and they are they are from Quebec uh, mm-hmm. in Canada, obviously. And they are from a 1984 or five, something like that, a trip when I was in like junior high. Oh, and cool. I went to Canada on a bus trip and I bought these two sketches. One of them is a little meta. It's a sketch of the street where the artists hang out. And the guy who did the sketch, I bought it in the alley that's in the picture in the scale, like one of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and like my mom framed them back in the eighties and now they're hanging in our house. And then over there is a picture of a, of a plant like in monochrome. I think it's not in black and white, but it's monochrome. <clears throat> and then I don't know, I'm looking around. There's nothing else on the walls in here, you know, but then we have like stained glass windows, you know? So mm-hmm. it's, it's like, yeah, I try to, um, I, I the opposite end of the spectrum is what my mom calls fully knickknacked. <laughs> which is when you walk into a place and every available flat surface has something on it. <laughs> Maximum oh knickknack. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not going there. 
neither 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 am I. That that implies dusting and, and it's not one of my favorite things to do. So Oh, for dusting, I highly recommend HEPA air filters that you can put in your central air. <laughs> I was oh, like, oh, nice. you know, we can reduce dusting by just spending a little bit extra on really good air filters going back to like, we can have nice things and going over the top. I am. You, know? you don't know how many notes I've already taken of stuff that I have to look up or do. <laughs> They're expensive, but I have really good pleated air filters and I change them every three months and they don't look dirty, but they do keep the dust down. And that's a good point. Um, I do mine every six months. Well, I personally don't do them. David does my husband, but when what I heard from the experts in like air conditioning and that sort of thing is prevent prevention is better than repair. And when yes. you do that every three months or every six months, you don't want it. It obviously filters more dust right out of your system yeah. and it keeps your stuff working. And yep. I, I think that's just an important thing to note that it could also apply to us as humans. Like, yeah, I would agree mm -hmm. <clears throat> with everything. Maybe maybe getting our teeth cleaned every three months instead of six. <laughs> My dentist is really busy. I want every nine months, and I'm lucky if I'm there every year. But get two dentists. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm getting two dentists. dentists. Yes. <laughs> one does the top. One does the bottom. I'm going to compare who's doing the better job. I'm going to call you Doctor Downer and Doctor Upper. Right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, one on my insurance, one on David's, and we just do them every three months. That's my plan. I haven't implemented yet, but it's an idea. <laughs> they might figure that out. Oh, yes. So, Meaning and else? magic. Those are the words that are popping up for me. What we're really talking about is we focus on what's meaningful to us, and we leave a space for magic to happen. Because mm. it needs space. If there is no yeah. space, it's like a recipe. Yeah, right? it's like the quiet, <clears throat> the the meaning and the magic are like quiet voices, um, or quiet, I uh, quiet thoughts. And if things are too noisy, there's no room for that thought to be heard. Mm -hmm. And even the space between your our call and response, right? The, I'm not waiting to say something. I'm actually listening to what you say. <laughs> right. Well, there's an art. Um, and a comfortability, a comf comf comfortability level, I don't know, words, words using, um, about using silence. And mm -hmm. some people learn, they deploy it surgically. They're like, you, you see them the day they learn that they can just sit quietly and let the guest eventually start talking again. <laughs> I'm like, yes, that's one level, but that's using, that's using silence as a weapon. <laughs> you can do that. Um, but we can also just mm -hmm. hold space for somebody listening to collect their thoughts for a second too. So, yeah. I like that, that, uh, the way that that phrase brings up a, an image in my mind, uh, at holding space. Like, you know, even though my guys oh, are yeah. 25 and 30, it's very, a very clear memory of me holding them as infants. And I think mm. that that's how we nurture and care for that space that we hold for magic. Hmm. I liked, um, have, I'm guessing you've heard of or done circle practice, you know, where you have a collection of people in a circle and you're, <clears throat> maybe you're trying to do something with restorative justice, or maybe you're just trying to talk about something sensitive, or maybe we, something happened in the group and we're just trying to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, I've done a couple of, they call those circles and they have a talking talisman. A lot of mm -hmm. times I'm in movement spaces, so we use somebody's water bottle, um, but like, the, if you can always spot people who've never done these before because they just sit there and they're like ready to burst, you know, and watching the talking piece go around the room. And then when you give them the talking piece, I mean, this is also super useful. And then it's just like a, a, a regurgitation of like, here's all the things I needed to say while this thing went around. And you can see people who, who do that versus people who, um, and I, I'm going to say, this is me in those circles. I'm really just enjoying that it's in that context, it's completely accepted and expected that you don't say anything. So I don't have to be thinking. I can just be doing the thinking that goes with listening. And you, you like to me, it's as wonderful to be in the circle the whole time that I'm not allowed to talk. You know, and then I've had cases where I get the thing and I'm like, I don't have anything to add. And I just like pass it on. And like, I think that holding space is as valuable for 
the space that it lets people talk in or be heard in as it is for everybody else. Like, okay, you don't have to worry about having to talk. You can just listen. Yes. And I, and I, there, I, I'm very familiar with that, um, that format. And, and the other thing, and tell me if you've experienced this, where you take that talking piece and um, you haven't prepared anything because you've been so, you know, so immersed <laughs> in enjoying the conversation that's happening. And then you pause, right? You hold that sacred space. Yes. And this, this something just comes through you that is not you alone. And you're like, wow. I, there's a, that, that, that has been my experience is that one, I didn't plan to say that, didn't know I was going to say it. And after I said it, I reflecting on it, like, that is so interesting. Yes. I'm chuckling and nodding along. Um, cause yes, I've had that experience and particularly the part where after I say something, I'm like, that was way better than what I would have said if I yes. had been thinking about what to say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and that leads me back to my thought about it's almost as if there's a quieter thought that right. I wouldn't have heard if I hadn't, you know, been in that, in the, in the place where I wasn't thinking about what I had to say. Yes. And, and here's, here's the magic behind that, that I, that I have found in the last couple of years when people, when other people experience that same thing is that you have an experience of, uh, you know, before anxiety, trying, you know, worrying about what people are going to mm -hmm. think, you know, mm -hmm. all those things that happen normally as, as a human. And then you allow that space, you are involved, you know, totally immersed in what's going on. And there's no effort. There's no, it's almost like it's a, it's a wave in versus, versus this, this pushing forward to get something done. That has been super like mind blowing for mm. me is that it can be more powerful with less effort and more meaningful when I don't try in the way I used to try and I let it come through me. And I love how you've paired through that um, silent space. Hmm. As much as I hate to say it, <clears throat> uh, we need to cut this at some point. So I think magic, and this may be the first one where we've actually talked about the title in the thing, but I think magic is going to be the title. Oh, I love it. So, Vivi, it was a delight, as usual, to get a chance to talk to you. I can't and... believe 20 minutes have gone by. This is so fun. <laughs> tell, I tell everybody in the pre-call, I'm like, it's a quarter mile drag race, zero to 60. <laughs> and when the airbag hits you, that's when it's over. <laughs> so 22 minutes is a, a nice bite-sized piece. Yeah, of, absolutely. If you haven't heard uh, Vivian Carrasco before, you definitely need to look her up. And I think you'll be happily delighted by what you find. So thanks, Vivi. You're welcome. Thank you.